Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to the Strong and Healthy Rehab Channel, a place to discuss all things rehab. A frequent question that I know I get, along with many other therapists, is that when somebody is about to start PT, they may ask, hey, uh, do I need to get an x-ray or MRI before I start with you? So to answer that question in the classic PT way, I'll say it depends. And we're going to talk about that in this video. But first, let's talk about what an x-ray and an MRI are and how they are used. Let's start with x-rays, since almost everyone has had an x-ray done at some point in their life. Most people have experienced one when they went to the dentist. That's when they have you like sitting in a chair, they throw that big heavy sheet on you, they put that camera looking thing up to your face, the person runs off and then you hear a click sound. Then a few minutes later, the dentist comes in with a picture of your teeth and starts talking about what they see. Well, that picture is an x-ray. But you may be asking, what is an x-ray? Well, x-rays are a form of radiation. And what an x-ray machine does is shoot that radiation towards a screen. And they just put your body part between the x-ray machine and the screen. And those x-rays are absorbed by things either in your body or they just pass right through to the screen. So dense things show up on the screen, such as bone, metal, or like, again, like really dense tissue with, with fluid in it, or it shows up as black, which is just the surrounding air. Now, while x-rays are used is that they're very useful for checking for very serious things, which we in the healthcare profession call sinister pathologies or red flags. These are things such as a fracture or a broken bone, an infection, or even a tumor. Now you may be wondering, how do you see an infection or a tumor? Well, speaking as before, that really dense tissue, there's usually fluid in it, and it shows up as this little white area on an x-ray, or everything just really looks out of place. They are used so often because, one, x-ray machines are relatively more affordable for a clinic to buy and operate. And two, it's easy to get an x-ray done, meaning that, you know, when you go see your doctor because something is hurting, they have you go into this room, lay on the table, they do the x-ray, and then within a few minutes of you being done and back in the exam room, the x-ray is ready to look at. So it is a very quick and easy way for a doctor to make sure that there is nothing really bad going on. X-rays do have some limitations. One thing is that everything on the X-ray is just all on top of one another. They call it being superimposed. And that's why it's hard to see where exactly things are at times. And that's also why the X-ray person asks you to like turn and you know, put, you know, put it here, put it there. I need you to flip. I need you to do that. So they can take X-rays from different angles. Also, X-rays can't see soft tissues, so things like muscles, tendons, ligaments. But that is where the MRI comes into play. It can be very useful. Starting off with what MRIs are is what does MRI stand for? It stands for Magnetic Resonant Imaging. And what it is is that it's a big machine with magnets in it. And those magnets create a magnetic field, and then it uses radio waves to take pictures inside something. MRIs have the benefit of being able to see soft tissue. So those things such as your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, they can, or organs, it can see all of that. Meaning that it can take a much better picture of what is going on inside of you. It also takes pictures at different levels, or you could think of it like slicing. So it's kind of slicing through the body and they can just get these images not only going across something, but they can go from front to back and top to bottom. And so that way the doctor can see exactly where something is going on or where these images are being found. Now you may be thinking, these machines sound amazing. Why don't they all use them? Well, first off, MRI machines 
cost a whole lot of money, well over a million dollars, plus add in the operational cost of running one. So many places are going to have a hard time affording one that may not get used very, very frequently. Also, to do an MRI, it takes quite a bit of time. Most MRIs can be around 30 minutes. So once you get the MRI done, you have to wait for a radiologist to read it and interpret the images. And that just adds more time to it. So they're just not as quick and easy to just walk in a room, get it done and walk back out. The doctor can look at it. You got to wait while this is performed, then again, have somebody reading it. And so I don't imagine many people want to go to the doctor and say, oh, okay, hop in line. They'll get to you to do your MRI in a couple hours. And then you got to wait longer until you get the results back. I know you've stuck around until this point to hear the answer to the question, do I need an x-ray or MRI before doing PT? And the answer is probably not, but it depends. Now, I ask you to please hear me out before throwing tomatoes and comments at me, but we'll talk about why you may not need one. So when making these points, I'm going to use the MRI more as the basis because this is the thing that people typically focus on wanting to have done to diagnose them. So I will start out to say one thing about MRIs is that they may be a little misleading in what is causing your issue. So to give you a little backstory, it used to be that the only people who got MRIs taken were people with pain or injury or something really bad going on. And so when they would do the MRI and the results would come back, they would notice that these people had damage going on or abnormalities as we'll call them. I'm going to use the air quotes here for a little bit. So they would find tears in their rotator cuff or their meniscus or disc bulges and these things like that. And, and the doctors reading it would say, oh, you see that right there? That's what's causing your pain because there was that damaged or abnormal area. Well, funny thing is humans are curious creatures and they start saying, well, let's look at people who don't have any pain or limitations or anything going on and let's see what it looks like inside of them. And they would notice that these people who didn't have any pain or limitations had the same damaged areas or the abnormalities as those people who, who said, I am in a lot of pain or I can't do this or I can't do that. Then researchers started doing all sorts of studies. They would look at MRIs of people after they've done therapy and they would find out that these people still had that same damage in their body or that same abnormality, but the person say, hey, I feel great. I'm back doing everything I want. They also start looking at people in some cases like after a rotator cuff repair. And they would look at people a year after rotator cuff repair and find that there was a percentage of people who would have a re-tear in that surgically repaired tissue. But these people would say, I don't have any pain. I don't have any issues out of my shoulder. They've also tried to predict a person's symptoms just based off of the MRI. So they brought people in, they had the MRI done, they gave it to some doctors and they said, please tell us what this patient is experiencing. And it actually didn't line up very often with what the people actually said that their symptoms uh, were. So we do have to be careful and aware that what is seen on something like an MRI may not match up with what is causing the symptoms that you tell us. There are also several other things that we need to consider as side effects of having an MRI. One big one is that it can increase your chance of having a surgery. This is because that doctor, that surgeon or whomever can see that damage or that abnormality in somebody's body or your body and say, oh, we need to fix that right there. And the person agrees to the surgery because they don't want to be broken. I've had patients sitting in front of me who have said this. I don't want to be broken. So they went through with the surgery. Now, I am not anti-surgery because surgery can be very beneficial for people with certain cases and it does have its place. However, surgery does have some significant risk. So 
There are the ones that people think about, blood clots, infections, or even death after a surgery. But also, surgery isn't a guarantee to help. And there's a good number of people who have a surgery and they end up with the exact same pain that they had before or that pain even got worse. So for some people, that surgery may not need to be the first option that they get. And unfortunately, that MRI is what led them to getting that surgery a little too early. There can be an effect on someone's psyche after an MRI, and they can develop something called kinesophobia, which is the fear of movement. Now, you may be saying, how can someone be scared to move after getting an MRI? Well, let's go back to those findings again. Someone could hear that they have degeneration in a joint or in the disc in their spine. Oh, you got a disc bulge, you have a tear somewhere, you have arthritis. And that person starts thinking back through their whole life. Everything that they have done through their life, any sports or you know, work activities, anything like that. And they think about that all up to that point. It could say something along the lines of, well, I did all this stuff in the past and look at what it's led my body uh, to where I am now. And if I keep doing this stuff, is it just going to make me worse and worse and cause more pain? And so a person can say, well, by doing all that, I caused that damage. Well, I just need to stop. I don't need to do anything because I don't want to make that worse. But, but that can lead to more pain from just being inactive. And also it can contribute to other health issues as well. Another issue can happen, and it kind of goes the other way as it messes with somebody, is that they have pain, they have an MRI done, and they're told everything on the MRI looks completely normal. It, it looks just fine. Now this person is confused because I'm experiencing pain, I'm experiencing this problem, but there was nothing found. And they can think, how could that even be possible? Am I going crazy? What is going on with me? can even lead them to believing that the doctor thinks that they're lying or their friends or family around there think they're lying because they're saying, hey, I have this terrible pain. I have this bad pain. But the doctor or other people say, look, well, nothing showed up on the MRI. So you're, you're just making this up. So we have to keep that in mind that that can have detrimental effects of somebody as well. That just because the MRI is considered normal doesn't mean that you're not dealing with something. With all that being said, an MRI can lead to an overall increase in the cost of someone's care for an issue that they are dealing with. First off, that MRI often is going to cost you or someone quite a bit of money to get. Yes, I know. Providers will tell you, you can get this MRI covered if you do blank. But I'm going to say eight, nine times out of ten, that provider doesn't know exactly what your health insurance covers. That's because there are a wide number of health insurance companies. There's a wide number of plans that they offer. And also they typically change up their what they cover from year to year. So it may be different from what they remember. Another thing, health insurance companies don't like paying out money. They don't like spending it. They like the money coming in. They don't like the money going out. So they don't like to pay for stuff. So they will try to pass off as much of that cost over to you as they can. So if you want to get one done, you or somebody that you know, just keep in mind that there could be a significant cost of, for you to have one done. And as mentioned previously, that MRI could lead to other things. It could lead to someone or you having to go see more specialists who do more tests or even doing surgery. And all of that just starts adding up monetarily. And you could also, you're spending all this money and racking up all these costs, and you could still be dealing with the same issue or even develop new issues based upon that. Okay. Now, you may have already written out a comment or you're planning to write out a comment about how you or maybe someone you know had a pain. They were told you got to do PT first. The, P the pain got worse. The issue got worse. And then they had to do the MRI and it finally found something. Yes, 
that does happen. And if you ever see any other post or videos talking about this same thing about having to do PT prior to the MRI, there will be people commenting under it about their experience. I'm going to tell you, this is a valid experience. Everyone's experience is their own and it is valid. But this is not an extremely common experience. And a lot can go into why someone did not benefit from physical therapy. There is a previous video I will link down in the description below that will give you more details on why physical therapy didn't benefit someone. One thing that you will hear people saying is that health insurance companies just need to straight up just pay for the MRI first. And I will tell you, the reason why they don't do that is that, again, it's an increased cost for them to not only pay for the MRI, but all those other things that we mentioned that it could lead to some other things. Of course, surgeries, you know, specialist, you know, fear of movement, just all could just lead to a whole lot of other issues that just cost a lot of money to them. One good thing health insurance companies do is they do look at research. So all this is backed on by research. And if you want to, PubMed or Google Scholar are great resources. You can look up all this stuff. I suggest to everyone to please look it up yourself and, and to understand what is going on. But again, those health insurance companies do look at that. And they do understand that there is evidence that shows that some people are improved or resolve their issue without ever needing an MRI. So they say, hey, do the PT first, do the conservative care. Let's see what happens. If it doesn't get better, then you will need an MRI. And I will say that if an MRI did help providers in diagnosing you, understanding what is going on and leading to the proper treatment, of course, those health insurance companies would say, you need to do that first because it's going to lower your overall cost for them. They would say, go get the MRI. We see the results. Boom, this is what you do, and boom, you're done, and, and, and there you go. And it would just save them and everyone a whole lot of money and time. But fortunately, that's just not the reality we live in. Okay, you're probably saying, Matt, what do you do if somebody comes to you and says, do I need to get an x-ray or MRI before I come see you? Well, I will tell you this is the process that I go forth with patients of mine or anyone who wants to do therapy with me. Tell them, we're first going to start out with just some screening questions. Again, x-rays and MRIs are excellent at finding really, really serious issues. And so we're just going to just talk about what they have going on, such as like, how did your symptoms come on? What are you experiencing? Those things. And if at any point, just with that questioning, we think that, hey, there's something really serious going on. Yes, you need to get that done. If not, we're going to proceed with the initial evaluation to assess them to see what is going on, what we find. And if at any point during that initial evaluation that we do determine like, hey, this person may need an x-ray, they may need an MRI because something is going on. Yes, by all means, we're going to refer them over to it. But for the majority of people, after we get through that initial evaluation, we're going to we'll find out, hey, it's okay to move you. It's okay to do these exercises and things like that. But I will tell them, you know, if you put forth a really good effort, you're really working hard and your symptoms are not getting better after a few weeks, you're not improving, or you start getting worse, please communicate with me and say, hey, yes, we are going to get you that x-ray, that MRI, or whatever that is that you need to help you in your journey. There you go. That's a little breakdown of some of the things to keep in mind about if you need any x-rays or MRIs before starting therapy. I will tell you one thing that you may want to keep in mind if you are dealing with an issue and going through your rehab journey is that you want to keep your cost as down as much as you can. Things like x-rays and MRIs are extremely useful at time, but they have the potential to bring up more issues, such as being worried that you're broken or, again, needing that unnecessary surgery that's really not going to help you. Ultimately, I will say, you are the one in charge of your own decisions for your health. And I always stress to people to make the best decision for you. But I ask you, keep these things in mind. 
so you can stay strong and healthy. Thank you for tuning into the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button. If you have a question or comment, drop them down below and please consider subscribing to the channel because all this information that is provided is to keep you strong and healthy.